All right, so that unarmed tornado that uh, tagged along with us last time uh, it seems like it was just there for the photo op. Uh, basically, the entire flight was a propaganda stunt, and I can't really blame them for that. So this mission is going to be a bit longer, and uh, due to our new status as a hero, we are going to escort the top brass to make up, and they will be flying a Yak-50, and uh, our role will simply be to you know, keep them safe, wave the flag, make sure everyone sees us. And uh, for this mission, I'm going to make sure my plane is... Oh, it seems to be a horrible weather too. Uh, I'm going to load additional fuel tanks for this. And I'm also going to load some rockets. Request rearming. Copy. I can see why they put us in a hangar for this. The weather looks to be absolute hell outside. So I'm going to load an additional two fuel tanks on the outer wings. And it's going to make our airplane a lot heavier. But I'm also going to bring missiles as a force multiplier. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I have no idea how long it will take us to reach makeup. And for that reason, I want to be on the safe Rearming side complete. regarding fuel, even if this is going to make our airplane most likely far too heavy. So, as usual, I have no idea how to start the Saber. I've been too focusing on actually, fl on the ground power. actually flying these missions to Copy. focus on that. So, the first thing we are going to do is we ground are going to uh, switch to outbo outbound tanks. Um, yeah, that should be good. I'm just going to check something, begging your pardon, but I need to check what... Yeah, good. So that one should... No? I just need to double check the commands. I mean, I just... Yeah, drop jettison is exactly where I thought it would be. The commander's aircraft has started taxiing. And then I added note that the commander's aircraft will not taxi onto the runway until we have begun taxiing. So make sure all your systems are set up before leaving the hangar. That means we set channel 3, radio on. Channel 3 is, and we set Master IFF to low. Chief, turn off the ground power. And thanks Copy. to outbound. There we go. Ground power is now off. Ground power is off. Cockpit is closing. We are drawing fuel from the outermost tanks. I know we've already started up, but um, all right, let's roll. Let's see where on so yeah we are on that part of the airplane. Of the airport, sorry. I can really feel the added weight of the fuel tanks here. Yeah, I can see the F-10 heading towards the active runway. So, uh, I like the fact that the mission commander have, or rather the mission creator, have added helpful little notes about the scripts. I've done enough missions myself to know that stuff aren't really working as intended at all times. 
and uh, while I myself probably would not would not add such a note, at least not in the mission, but it was mentioned in the briefing. I do appreciate the fact that they have taken the time to get it done. Speaking of that, it looks like they are towering an F-15 behind me, so I'm wondering if that plane is going to take over my hangar once I've vacated it. Flaps going down. We're gonna let the commander take off first, and uh, once the commander has taken off, we should be good to go. Sushi, forward, one, one, request takeoff. Forward, one, one, unable to clear for takeoff. Copy, Sochi. Just let me know when. Put the site on warm up mode and yeah. Sites are good. Rudder needs a little bit adjustment to stay on the runway. Oh, poor F-16s left alone all out, all out in the rain. Also, um, this is the second time I forgot to just fold the air brake. I should really start to... We're gonna stay low for a bit, 1,500 feet, over the town of Sochi. We'll let you know when we begin our climb. Copy that. I think I still got you on visual, so this is going to be a tricky escort indeed, due to the weather. If this was supposed to be some kind of victory lap, uh, due to the propaganda of yesterday's flight, oh god no. Uh, then it's going to be too close for comfort now. Well, at least I got a visual on the dude straight ahead. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a updated dot system that makes spotting a bit easier. Uh, and this is to compensate the pretty poor spotting already present in DZS. So using these advanced labels that are grey and do not distinguish between friend and foe is actually a kind of neat thing. Speaking of neat things, flying in rain in DCS has always been a nice experience, especially in when you're like you're really feeling like you're facing the rain just like this, with droplets and uh, the wind and everything. Like, and especially with the lightning as well, DCS is, has been pretty good with rain uh, lightning effects as well. Not as good as Ghost Recon Wildlands, but when it comes to weather effects, I don't think anything can beat Ghost Recon Wildlands. So, let's uh, stay low and keep, try and keep that plane visual. We got an absurd amount of fuel on board. And should we waste uh, the outer fuel tanks, all we have to do is drop them. And, um, yeah. But I'm not really sure if anything is going to try and take on this aircraft, really. And, uh, I mean, we're not really flying into any particular combat zone. Rather, we are flying away from the front. So she may be an advanced airfield for our forces. But uh, Sukumi is still closer. We haven't actually flown that much over enemy territory as of yet. We're beginning our climb now up to 20,000 feet. 
Copy that. Up to 20,000 feet. Roger. I might have started a, t a bit of a too steep climb here. What do you say? I've lost pretty much all my sense of direction, but I can still assume that I'm climbing. Damn, that's a really deep cloud cover. Okay, we've broken through the cloud cover. All we have to do now is keep our eyes open for the commander's Yak 50. Sorry, Yak 40. Not Yak 50, Yak 40. And once we've regained contact, we will be forming up with them. We have broken through the cloud deck. If you have lost sight of me and can't pick me up, wait for me over waypoint one. I like the fact that they've actually expected that to happen. Uh, N. DB307 should be the... Yeah, I can actually see him on the F10 map, so... I'm actually going to be cheap enough to use the F10 map to try and... Yeah, I can see him. Uh, Yak 40 we have a visual on you at this point in time. It looks like all we needed was to be pointed in the right direction. In a way, this mission feels a little like a tutorial mission, like how do you follow someone in poor weather conditions. I don't actually mind that because to be honest, I need a bit of I need a bit of practice in that regard. Then again, the saber doesn't really have all those fancy tools that a lot of the other birds do get. We're still climbing. I have to say I'm not really looking forward towards the return trip, but at least then I don't have to worry about this passenger liner. I wonder why he's flying anyway. I mean, if the country's at war and neither side is getting any imports, say for maybe the fuel they need to fly their f planes, one would, would think that some kind of land-based transport to make up would be a lot safer. We are leveling at 
20,000 feet. Copy that. I'm going full burn for almost the duration, so I'm very happy to have the extra fuel tanks along for the ride. Copy that. Well, it's getting a bit hard to keep up with the guy. Formation flying has never been my forte. We are over waypoint one, which is above NDB 307. We're making a right turn direct to Makeup and 030. Let's switch to channel 12, 254 megahertz for the remainder of the flight. Copy that, we are on channel 12. Heading 030. Fuel quantity still looks good. I mean, those outer wing tanks are really big, so I don't expect them ex expect to drain them anytime soon, really. Alright, let's answer with the... Go ahead. What's it like flying that old aircraft of yours? This is actually a quite sweet mechanic, answering with the F-10. Well, I prefer to answer, hey, I actually like this flying this thing, rather than try and say, oh my god, I feel very outclassed by everything. Because I don't really do that. Uh, in any sort of dogfight situation, I can probably expect to at least try to hold my own. I mean, I've dogfight the Sabre with the F5 and the Vigan. Um rather against the Sabre and the MiG-15 on Cold War service, and to be honest, these pilots can hold their own, most, most uh, because they are reliant on guns, and 
especially the Vigan is very vulnerable to gunbirds. Because gunbirds can like Saber and MiG-15 can uh, get inside their turn radius. The Vigan doesn't have any guns on its own. So I would be worried facing a MiG-15. I'm uh, oh, sorry, facing yeah, facing a MiG-15 or a Saber in the Vigan. Uh, not so much with the F5. The F5 has internal guns and uh, its own line of missiles and stuff like that. But you should never underestimate one of these old birds in any sort of fight. Relic one, if you're able to, can you tighten the formation with us to get nice and close? The commander in the back here wants to get a picture of your saber. Copy that. We're going to ditch those outer fuel tanks to get some more speed and switch to inner fuel tanks. I'm going to see if we can't use the extra speed from the drop there to uh, get nice and alongside. They didn't really say which side they wanted us to fly on, but we can do that. At least we can do a decent pass by, but with the heaviest tanks off us, we actually gain we I think we gained too much on them to be honest. I haven't done much yet. I've I've been to a propaganda puff piece where a backfire did all the job, and then I blew up two tiny boats. So I haven't really done that much yet. Wait a minute. Yeah. But hey, if flying around doing stuff like this helps morale, then who the hell am I to argue? We are 24 miles outside of Maycom. We are going to start our descent into the airport. Yeah, this is me just fooling around with my new flight stick. I got the uh, Wolf Hog uh, stick a few days back. I haven't really been able to use it all that much, but I'm loving it to death, and it's the best feeling I can give the stick is that I miss force feedback. I remember when force feedback in joysticks was a thing, and I was like, why would I get the wolf hog if it's expensive and don't have any force feedback? Now, the reason is you don't need force feedback with this stick. I mean, even force feedback would feel a bit feeble after this. Uh, I mean, I had I had vibrating sticks and everything like that. I had proper uh, proper force feedback sticks, the Microsoft Sidewinder, and while I li like the Sidewinder and everything like that. Uh, I can't argue with the sheer power behind power and purpose are the words I would have to use that I have with this deck. Because I feel myself actually flying the aircraft. It's not like I'm doing a quick maneuver and the aircraft struggles to keep up with the fast motion of the stick. No. Uh, I can feel the pull of it in a way that I didn't do with my X-52, and I think I lost the game. God damn it. Uh, apparently he is behind us, but he also said he was starting his descent. Ah, there he is. 
<sighs> Look at me enjoying the air show. Then again, I can un I can also understand why the nation we are fighting for is so happy to have the saber because basically our second mission was literally uh, trying to salvage scrap from a downed aircraft, and the only thing the enemy seemed to afford to throw against us, uh, even with such a valuable target as four helicopters, they just threw two attack boats into the mix. I mean, they could have easily just tried and scrambled a single fighter or something like that. They didn't. And uh, it appears like the material... Alright, the commander has cleared us for the return trip to Sochi. And uh, this is a part I intend to speed up, so I will see you at Sochi approach and we'll see if I can return, I can once again do the feat of landing the saber. Something I've only done once. I say that again, I've only landed the saber once. So I'm going to do a final field check. I am going to lock in the course. I'm going to trim the aircraft just right. We heard some sound on the radio. Unclear what the hell that was. I can't actually see anything. Close me. Scanning instruments. If something is malfunctioning. If that's the case, I can't actually see it. Uh, IFF clear, radio clear. Uh, okay, uh, I haven't really... Yeah, we might actually need to check the F-10 to sh uh, show me the failure. Yeah, uh, the hydraulic pressure is uh, dropping. Okay, so yeah, I don't feel proud at all regarding that, because I really should have noticed that the hydraulic pressure was loading on my own. But, I mean, this is a very good way to learn the aircraft, so let's do an emergency call to Sochi. Mayday, 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 Sochi approach, this is Relic 1, declaring an emergency. Main and utility hydraulic pump appears inoperative. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Sochi approach. This is Relic 1, declaring an emergency. Main? This is Sochi approach. I understand that you're declaring an emergency. You are cleared for the NDV approach and cleared to land on runway 6. Emergency vehicles will be standing by. Copy that. We'll do a straight down dive and try to lose as much altitude as possible. I'll keep the tanks just in case I need to... Uh, I need to land on them. Uh, 
weapon systems are secure. We're going to break through the cloud cover. We are going to put engine power on minimal. And we are going to let the momentum carry us as much as we can. Now, as far as I know, hydraulic pressure might regulate stuff like gears and flaps, and that might actually not be a good thing for us. Yeah. So, the cloud cover was really low today. We're increasing the speed a little bit, and I'm very happy we did not crash straight into the ground. Relic 1, once you land, you can stay on the runway. We'll come and get you with the tug. Emergency vehicles will meet you on the eastern end of runway 6, where the two runways intersect. Copy that. Flight controls appear to be operative. Rudder is operative. Control surfaces operative. We are above the town of Sochi now. Extending flaps. Let's see if that works. Flaps are not extending. Or rather, they are not extending as much as they should do. Flaps are now res responding. Air brakes are not responding. I say again, air brakes are not responding. That's a bad thing. Bad thing indeed. I have to say I really like this little story feature that First you get to fly a bit and then they have basically fouled something up with your plane. So, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's a tutorial campaign, but it becomes that way because it's actually, I find it very easy to get into as a person who doesn't have that much experience with the Sabre. And... At the same time, it just introduces all these concepts in a timely manner, and I can only appreciate that. So, I mean, a little bit like this Thermovic campaign 4810, um, this campaign is actually not as much a tutorial campaign in disguise as it is fun times mixed with a tutorial. So I'm gonna to increase engines a little bit. Uh, I would very much like to have some sort of visual cue on Sochi. Maybe I, it might actually be what I'm seeing up ahead, but I don't think so, because I'm still following the coast. Hydraulic pressure is absolutely gone at this point. So I can only hope the uh, wheels are on a different system altogether. I'm actually getting a bit worried. But I got something up ahead at least, so... 
We'll keep following the coast until we get a visual on Sochi. Meanwhile, I should focus on get lowering my airspeed as much as possible. Try and make sure that our airspeed is... Um, Yeah, I got a visual on Sochi Airbase. And just like last time, we will wait until the last possible second with extending our landing gear. If our landing gear still works. Because if there's something I think absolutely positively is connected to hydraulics, I would say landing gear would have to be it. And I was right. Landing gear does seem to be connected. Because at this point in time I cannot extend my landing gear. We'll have to land on the fuel tanks. And amazingly this is actually something I have experience doing. Again, gear are, gears are not responding. Gears of war not responding. That tug better be good at towing aircrafts that are belly landing. We are doing a horrible, horrible belly landing here. But I want to stress that under the circumstances, that belly landing... Under the circumstances, I want to I want to rate that belly landing really, really good. I mean, under the circumstances, we lost our sidewinders, we lost our fuel tanks, but that belly landing does not leave anything to be desired. I'm just gonna say that. 